Okay, Chris Temple with Harry Koppel. Um, Harry, it was going pretty well. You had an outdoor PB, a national record, yes. and then you went and sailed over 585 <laughs> for a new British record. Just sum that afternoon up for us. I mean, it's pretty special. Um, I, don't, I don't think anybody sort of expected it coming uh, back to Manchester after the last few comps that we've had here. It's always bad weather, but it's been great weather. Obviously, no crowd today, but the atmosphere inside has actually been really good. Whatever they've done with the, uh, the tracks and everything that we've had going has been really good. It's just been, it's been, a, it's been a fun day. A lot of the competition unfolded before you even came in, of yeah. course. You obviously came in with confidence, given the height you came in at today. Yeah, I mean, um, I warmed up pretty well, so... <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I saved it. I saved it. <laughs> For the benefit of the tape, that was me falling off the stage. <laughs> Sorry, Gary, hurry up. carry on. No worries. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do what I wanted to do in my first comp last week, uh, but then the warm-up went really well, so we just decided to, you know, save energy, do as little jumps as we can, and just move through the comp as we did. I mean... Like I say, it changed it a little bit when I was on my own because it means I could skip heights and sort of move to where I want to. But, I mean, the end result was fine. So, you know, however we get there, doesn't matter. It went to 584 initially, and then it, it's nudged up to 585. What was the, the story behind that? I think I think there's something behind the rankings with 585. And then I just thought it's, it's a, bit more of a, a bit more of a marker, especially in, like, in world rankings and, world, like, world pole vault, I think. Um, I think it's been a while since... Uh, Somebody British has sort of tried to make a dent in some world pole rankings, so I just thought I'd give it a go. And obviously, you've attacked this this shortened season, this unfamiliar season, particularly with Relish, given that ooh, you didn't make Doha, obviously. Yeah. Is that, has that been a key motivator for you this year? Is like I missed out last year. This is now. Let's get things going. Yeah, definitely. After going out there and getting injured, I was just like, I, I really wanted to jump this year. So I was like, um, even though the prep coming out of lockdown hasn't been perfect, I'm still really keen to do some comps. So I'm still trying to get some booked in. Or after this, I still want to do maybe two or three more, just to do some jumping before we put in the work for next year. And what, what sort of confidence has given you going onto the global stage? We see what the big guys are doing now. We're yeah. seeing 607 on the street. Yeah, and all all sorts real of competition stuff the other day. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really good confidence booster. I mean, it's just great to be competing with those guys anyway. But like after today, I know that I can sort of be up there with them at the bigger heights instead of just along for the ride, which is a great feeling. And obviously, you've got the Olympic qualifying mark already, so um, <laughs> that's a huge weight off your shoulders going into what will hopefully will be another successful year next year. How do, you, how do you approach that year now with that standard already made? I mean, it's really good to get it outdoors, which is the main thing. Because obviously, my qualifier was booked in indoors, so mm. it's good to sort of replicate the form I was in. Um, yeah, now just make sure we get a good winter, stay fit, stay healthy, and then work on the things that we need to do, ready for indoors, and then a, big, a long season next year.